Hi everyone, this is first video for day three. We're going to talk about trig trigonometric identities. We've actually already seen a few of them. <coughs> Recall these three, which we call Pythagorean identities because they can be proved using the Pythagoras theorem applied to just the definitions of the trig ratios. The fundamental one is that sine squared plus cosine squared for any angle equals one. And then from there, you can get the remaining two for example, to get the 1 plus 10 squared, you divide both sides of the equation by cosine squared. And to get the 1 plus cotangent squared, you divide both sides of the equation by sine squared. Then we also have the basic definitions of, um, of these three ratios. Tangent as a ratio of sine cosine. Cotangent as a ratio of cosine sine. Sine cosecant, secant cosine having the inverse relationship <clears throat> and by inverse I mean algebraic inverse not functional we also have transformation identities namely sine of negative x is negative sine x <coughs> cosine of negative x is cosine x tangent of negative x is tangent x and lastly we have this relation some of which you proved in week 1 worksheet like sine of 90 minus x is cosine Cosine of 90 minus x is sine, tangent of 90 minus x is cotangent, and so on. The bonus problem is proof the above six using a right triangle and basic trig ratio definitions. Um, one for sine or cosine is already a part of the worksheet. Um, and then doing the remaining four, it's kind of straightforward. You can use the same triangle. Now using just these basic relationships, um, let's simplify trigonometric expressions. So when it says simplify, what it means is write it in the simplest possible form, which means just like with numbers or with algebraic terms like polynomials, you cancel out what you can, um, you combine what you can, and have the least number of terms at the end. So the first one, <coughs> cosine t plus tangent t sine t. Now the first thing to remember here is that I can write tangent in terms of sine. So leave cosine as it is. Tangent is a ratio of sine to cosine. This immediately gives me, this is cosine t, writing it as a fraction over 1. Sine t times sine t is sine squared t. Let's take, combine these fractions by LCM. If I want the common denominator to be cosine t, I have to multiply and divide by cosine t and I get cosine squared plus sine squared which I know from the basic identity to be 1 and then I know that 1 over cosine t is actually just secant t. So this is what simplified form means. We, when we started we had three different trig ratios cosine, tangent, sine but at the end we are left with a single trig ratio just secant. Second example, sine over cosine plus cosine over 1 plus sine. Now over here, um, this 1 plus sine is sort of out of place. It's not a single identity. So I'm going to use a tool that you learned in Math 135, which is rationalization. Except um, because of the presence of the word rational, it sort of doesn't make sense. But it's going to be the same idea, meaning I'm going to multiply and divide by the conjugate. And the motivation for doing that is I know that 1 plus sine and 1 minus sine is going to give me 1 minus sine squared, which I know already to be cosine squared. Right? So this is going to be sine theta over cosine theta plus cosine theta times 1 minus sine theta and in the denominator I have 1 minus sine squared theta. Now because I have this relation that 1 plus cosine 1 equals cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta if I subtract sine squared theta from both sides I get this. So this becomes sine theta over cosine theta plus cosine theta times 1 minus sine theta over cosine squared theta, one of these cancel, 
And now it's easy to combine these fractions because the denominator is cosine theta. Sine theta plus 1 minus sine theta cancels out the sine theta. And once again, even though I started with a very complicated fraction with different ratios, I end up with one single ratio, cosecant theta. That's what simplification means. Next one, uh, secant over cotangent. This is rather straightforward and it uses um, your knowledge of fractions of fractions. Secant is 1 over cosine and cotangent is cosine over sine. Now when you have complex fractions, um, you can rewrite them with the division sign and then use the fact that division is just multiplying by the reciprocal. <coughs> so when you take the reciprocal, this becomes sine x over cosine squared x um, and I can write cosine squared as x as 1 minus sine squared x. Now here, unlike the previous two cases, I did not end up with one term, right? It, it, it looks like I made it more complicated, but the objective that has been met here is that instead of having two different ratios, I'm expressing everything in terms of sine. So in that respect, it's still a simplification. We have been using this word called identity, but what really is an identity? In mathematics, a statement that is always true is called an identity. For example, sine squared x plus cosine squared x is 1. This is true for any angle x. And the reason we know it's true for any angle x is because you can start with a general triangle and it's still going to work. A non-example is say sine x plus cosine x is 1. Or when x is 0 degrees, it's true because sine 0 is 0 and cosine 0 is 1. When x is 90 degree, it's true. But let's say when x is 45 degrees, then what I get, sine 45 plus cosine 45 is 1 over root 2 plus 1 over root 2, which equals root 2, which does not equal 1. So this is not an identity. Because it may be true for some values of x, but it's not true for any or all values of x. So here are the steps for proving an identity. <clears throat> Let's say I want to show that cosine theta times secant theta minus cosine theta equals sine squared theta. Based on the equal to sign, I'm going to call everything to its left as the left hand side and everything to the right as right hand side shorthanded as LHS and RHS. Now let's simplify the left hand side. So I get cosine theta secant is 1 over cosine minus cosine distribute cosine theta over cosine theta minus cosine squared theta that's 1 minus cosine squared theta which is sine squared theta. Step 2 simplify the right hand side if it's not simplified. So in this case, it's already sine squared. And you see that they match up. So we write that as LHS equals RHS, meaning the left hand side equals the right hand side for all values of theta. So this is an identity. Let's do a couple more examples. Verify that this is true. Once again, I label this as left hand side and I label this as right hand side. <coughs> let's solve the, not solve, sorry, let's simplify the right hand side. I'm going to combine these. The LCM is going to be 1 minus sin x, 1 plus sin x. I have 1 plus sin x minus 1 plus sin x. Be careful here, you are distributing the negative sign. Right, so negative times negative, po negative, and negative times, sorry, negative times positive, negative, and negative times negative, positive. These cancel out, so I get 2 sine x, and I get 1 minus sine squared x, which I know is 
cosine squared x. So that is my right hand side. Let's start, let's work with my left hand side. Writing it as definitions, tangent is sine over cosine and secant is 1 over cosine. This is 2 sine x over cosine squared x. And I notice that my left hand side lines up with my right hand side, which means it is an identity. Second one, cosine u over 1 minus sine u is secant u plus tan u. Right hand side, left hand side. Now we use the strategy that we did before. Whenever you have a 1 plus sign or 1 minus sign in the denominator, we are going to multiply it by the conjugate. And the reason being that we know that 1 minus sine squared or 1 minus cosine squared is going to give me one term. It's going to give me the square of the other one. So this is cosine u, 1 plus sine u, 1 minus sine squared u. And then it becomes clear as to why we did that, because this comes out to cosine squared u, which then cancels out. So this is 1 over cosine u plus sine u over cosine u, if you break it along the plus sign, which is secant u plus tan u, which is exactly RHS without simplification. So in some cases, you may not even have to simplify both sides. But keep in mind that it's usually better that you simplify both sides um, and the simplified forms should match up. Okay, um, I'm going to stop this video here. In the next video, we look at one more example and then we move on to um, different types of identities for trig functions.